Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today we're going to cover a news story which usually pops up around once a year, where a particularly gifted reefer is exposed to something called palytoxin, resulting in a trip to the local hospital. Now I have no doubt that many of you will have been sent a link to one of these articles previously, either by a concerned loved one or a disgruntled neighbour that thinks you're going to use biological warfare against them the next time their cat poos in your garden. The problem with these news articles is that they harm our hobby, and are often plagued with inaccurate information, with one of them I remember claiming that Xenia was the culprit. Today I'm going to clear up a few things. Firstly, I'd like to start by saying that palytoxin is no joke, and although any good fish shop should explain to you exactly what you're buying, it is however our responsibility to research the animals in our care. So what exactly is palytoxin? Palytoxin is a toxin produced by members of the palithoa and zoanthid families. Not all of them have the same toxicity level, and it's widely accepted that pallies are the more dangerous of the two. However, as some people are unable to tell the difference between them, it's wise to be cautious when handling both. They are widely considered to be a desirable beginner coral, due to their hardiness, vibrant diverse coloration, and price range. Like many things, they can also be inadvertently added to an aquarium as a hitchhiker on live rock, or even other coral frags. So are these corals in your tank a time bomb just waiting to go off? Not really. When handled correctly, they're relatively safe. Don't get me wrong, I couldn't find any recorded acris death from palytoxin. However, if you received a high enough dose, it absolutely would be lethal but so can a dog, knife, or frisbee when placed in the wrong hands. So how can you protect yourself? As long as you follow these four basic rules, you shouldn't have any issues. 1. Keep handling of corals to a minimum. This is for both you and the coral's benefit. 2. Wear proper protective equipment when you do need to handle them. At the very least, thick gloves and eye protection. Three. Where possible, try to avoid exposing these corals to the air. And finally, 4. Wash your hands thoroughly after working on your tank, especially before eating and drinking. Fortunately, when on surfaces, the toxin can easily be deactivated using a simple household bleach. So if for some reason you decide to use your food containers to dip your corals, I'm sure that some of you out there will be doing this. Firstly, Stop being so tight and go and buy yourself some coral specific containers. And secondly, clean all the containers you have been using with bleach to make them safe again. I can't believe that I have to say this, but to protect myself, please don't drink bleach if you yourself get exposed. It doesn't work like that. So if it's so easy to stay safe, where do people run into issues? The problems usually occur when the reefer does something wrong. There are two ways in which people usually get exposed to the toxin. The first is during the process of fragging the coral, which if you follow the tips I previously mentioned, you should stay pretty safe. Surprisingly, this seems to be the less likely of the two, as the majority of the time the issue is caused when the acris removes the coral from the aquarium to either sterilise a rock or kill an invasive species. This usually involves either scrubbing the coral with a brush, exposing it to boiling water, or it being exposed to the jet from a pressure washer. Each of these essentially vaporises the toxin, and once it's vaporised it can travel a considerable distance, causing issues not just for the person working with the coral, but anyone in the immediate proximity. So what do you do if you believe you have been exposed? You probably should be heading to your local hospital right now, rather than watching a YouTube video, and although there is no cure for palytoxin, it's best to be monitored and they should be able to alleviate some of the symptoms as your body deals with the toxin on its own. The main symptoms to look out for are fever, chest pain, difficulty breathing, a rapid heart rate, a metallic taste, and tingling in the extremities. There are other symptoms as well, however as they are things like runny nose, cough, sore throat, and headaches, which are all relatively common for a whole number of illnesses, I thought it would be better to point out the main ones first, before you all start running to the doctor. Once again I just want to remind you that I haven't found any recorded cases of a hobbyist dying 
and that we can still enjoy these corals providing we have respect for them. Therefore the next time you get the urge to lick that everlasting gobstopper polyp, to see if it really does taste like a gobstopper, you might want to reconsider it. I hope you enjoyed watching my video, please feel free to comment below if you have any questions, if you did enjoy it, why not click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good week and I'll see you next time. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to the people that support the channel on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of what you do with regards to keeping this channel going. You've all been brilliant. Thank you.